So if I do 100 times 0.5, I'm going to get 0, 0, 0,05 with one decimal point. So that's going to equal 50. Well, what happened to that decimal place? That decimal place moved two places to the right. So what do you think is going to happen to the thousand? It's going to move three places. So which of these is 1,000 times 5, which is going to be a place value that's greater? These are less and these are greater. So if I'm looking for the place value that's 1,000 times, I'm going to move my decimal three places. Or I'm going to look for the place value that is three places to the left. One, two, three is going to be two. So in this question, we've got a uh, student breaks a glass beaker. Boom. Okay. How should it be disposed of? But then especially by the teacher. So they want me to say what I'm going to do to dispose of the glass. That makes this question a lot easier. Um, I'm going to have to do something. So uh, any random garbage can is a horrible idea because if I pick up the garbage can, if the student does, the custodian does, bad times. I can't call a custodian because I have to dispose of it. The question said I have to do it. Um, so now I've got use, using latex gloves to sweep it up. And then, oh, we're back to the garbage can. No good there. Yeah, the best answer. Answer while wearing those goggles. Sweep up the glass and place it in the labeled broken glass container. All right, so we're going to go ahead and dig into some of these different areas, um, components of literacy acquisition. And the first one we're going to look at is phonemic awareness. Now, right away, the first thing that you're seeing on this screen is this big, uh, this smile, this mouth right here. And that is purposeful because I want you already thinking about speaking. That's going to be our clue here. But let's look at the definition first. Phonemic awareness includes the ability to separate a word into the sounds that make it up and blend single sounds into words. All right, I'm going to draw a line here because we're going to come back and, and stop there um, once we finish the definition. It also involves the ability to add, subtract, or substitute new sounds and words. There's a lot to unpack here. It looks like a short definition, but this is packed with things we need to talk about. So when we look at these questions or these quest, uh, these answer choices, A is immediately out because if you're watching a video that does not have anything to do with um, oral language development, a debate definitely does because there's a lot of thoughts and ideas kind of free flowing. Um, there's oral language development going on. That's our best answer so far. Let's take a look here um, to see if there's any other ones that might work. C, having a guest speaker come in, they're not the ones that need help with their oral language development. It's your students. And then D, so C is out. And then D, having a student read two texts, compare them with trash in an essay, that's writing language development, not oral language development. So D is out and B is our correct answer. So again, we're going to break down what the question is specifically asking. So in this case, they have a specific disability that we're looking at, which is Asperger's syndrome, which we know is on the autism spectrum. So when we're talking about students with autism and primarily with Asperger's syndrome, many of our students are going to be receiving some type of a speech therapy service. Well, what is this going to be focused on? Well, when we know that some of our students who have autism, it's not that they have a hard time with the actual words all the time, but it's what their, their intonation and what their inflection is. So how they're saying it, their tone, their pitch, could because a big goal is that we're going to want to make sure that we're being as socially appropriate as possible. So we're going to be looking for some of those abnormal speech patterns, um, and that's going to be reflected in, again, irregular pitch, intonation, pace, rhythm, and articulation. So when we're looking at our answer choices and we're talking specifically about that oral language development, we know that our answer is going to be A because we're looking again for that pitch, that inflection, whereas 
vocabulary, different tenses, construction of sentences when we're talking about our syntax. These are going to be very different types of skills, often reflected in their writing, versus this is the actual speech that they're going to be producing. Teaching the students to use phrases like, may I borrow the dictionary, instead of give the book to me, and excuse me, instead of get out the way, is best achieved through in this case, it is going to be improvisation and role play. One of the things that you have to definitely keep in mind when you are teaching English language learners is their cultural background, right? And you cannot assume that they understand sometimes the phrases that they're using. So improvisation, role play is a perfect, perfect um, strategy that you as a teacher can use um, to teach him kind of like not only how they should be using the language, right, but also are they using it in the right context. So improvisation and role play always, always should be done contextually. <laughs> 